it's Kay in front of the camera. And Maggie behind. Okay, and th these are showing us our brand new oh. dimensional pocket page dies. Is that They're right? Is that fabulous. right? Fabulous, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, we don't yeah. like the G word, so we're no, not using no. that. <laughs> So, so you get two dies you get this one which does a pocket with um, quarter of inch um, dimension that will fit your which fits perfectly or mats so you can fit your ephemeral pages uh, no what you call them ephemeral Ephemera cards, cards. Ephemeral yeah. cards on yeah. okay so it's designed specifically for that uh, so that cuts out that and it's a set size these means you can make a dimensional pocket um, to go on your pages or your projects any size you like okay so I'm going to do the first one is we'll show you this one first and then we're going to do the second one okay so when you cut it out you're going to get score lines along here right okay so that's just score lines I've just marked them out with pencil but obviously they won't be in pencil when you do them so when you so you just need to get those um, creased up so I just and I tend to use a ruler and folder. Right, I'm scoring it in the wrong direction because I'm going to pull it back in a minute but I just find it easier doing it this way. Entirely up to you and we're using a light card so you can see what we're doing. Am I, am I still in shot? Yeah you're okay. perfect. Right just lift that up. Dimensional pages are quite useful on your on your on your dimensional pockets are quite useful for putting yeah, all sorts of are. things in there. Right, so what I do then is just square it well and give it give it a little bit of a burnish because Maggie's behind the camera and she'll just shut it. I am. And what tool are you using, Kate? I'm to using our with? Uh, using our multi-purpose Teflon tool. That's what I'm using. So I'm not overly worried about those little tiny weeny bits at the moment, but, but they will have a purpose in a minute. So that's your card and what it will do is these little bits there will just look bend in. You've got these little bits here, they just look bend in and you don't glue those. Okay, okay? so no glue on those at you all. You don't need glue on those at all. They're literally in there to stop it looking, having gappy. Yep, okay. Right? So the glue is going to go onto this little tiny weeny bit here on both sides. So you can either glue it or stick it. I'm going to attempt to stick it with um, tape because it'll be quicker. But we'll see how it goes. We're using our pro type tape, so it should be fine. Yeah. I'm so, zoomed in, so come forward towards that's so it. So what I'm gonna do is put a bit of tape on there and just cut it to size. So you can use a drop of a glue and then just hold it in place for a few minutes. But as it's on the tape, I'm just trying to save a little bit of time. So I've got a sticky bit on here. Yep. Okay. Make sure that's right. And same on the other side. So it's not going on the little tiny bit that no, you. No, it is only you going would on. Logically, think it does go there, but it yes, doesn't. It no. goes on like the little triangle bit. Yeah. So, which is actually a square shape. Well, it depends on how you look at it, really. Isn't yeah. It? Okay. So that's because I'm using tape. You can use glue. I might use glue as well in a minute. Right. Taped up. Okay, so I'll take those off. So they are both. Okay, so I've got sticky bits there and there. So when I pull this over, you can either stick it like that, and that gives you a nice mitered corner. Beautiful. Like so. Okay, and all you can see is a little bit of tape, but you're gonna, that's going to be underneath. So you can just burnish that from underneath. Hold that in place. So you can. So if you're using a tape, uh, as if you're using glue, you'll just hold it in place while it does that. Mm -hmm. Or, although I've put the tape in the wrong place, so you could, if you wanted to, and you find it easier, you can, there's no reason why you can't do it like that. It's not as neat though. It's not as neat, it? but if you're going to finish, if you're going to put this on a, on a page, you're not going to yeah. see it anyway. It's not as neat, but however, if you want to do it that way, you're more than, it's, it, it, and it's easier to see, then do it that way. But I'm just going to hold that there and give that a squidge. So let's hold it in place and then put bone tool underneath and just push it up and that holds it in place. So I'll do the same again on the other side because it didn't stick properly. So 
hold that in place. So you put it flat on the, on the surface. And that what it does is gives you a nice easy, you can cut it by scissors if you like, there's no reason why you can't do that if you want to, but however this gives you a precise finish each time yeah. and you end up with nice sharp corners. And then you stick that onto your page <coughs> and then you'll then you can put your ephemeral card on top. Or slide it inside if you want. Like that. So, so, so you can have it on top like that if you want to, or if you've got pictures or photographs you can have those as a series in, on top of your page. If you want to, and you want, you can cut in using one of our whisker dies to shape that piece. So there's no reason why you can't do that. You can so do a lid with it as well. Oh, you can do it. Yes, you can do a lid. So you can cut out another one, and just cut off these side pieces, and then you put the lid will fit over the top, and then you can secure it with one of our dumbbells or one of our other secure, um, clever closures. Okay, so there's loads you can do with that. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is our never-ending dimensional pocket page dies. Is that right? Yeah, very good today. <laughs> I'm looking forward to you spelling it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, won't, we won't do spelling. I'm so mean. She is. Right, so what I'm going to do is I want my pocket size to be two inches by four inches. Is this your finished pocket size? Yes. Yes. So it's going to be four inches long and it's going to be two inches wide. So I'm afraid there's a little bit of mass. So what you need to do, so that's your finished side, but you need to do, take into account, you've got that piece and that piece. So that piece is quarter of an inch, and it's exactly the same onto the uh, free, free range ones. Free range? Yeah, free range ones. <laughs> free range ones. And then that is half an inch. So that is one uh, quarter and a half is uh, three quarters. So you've got that on each side. So... I want my finished one to be four inches long, so therefore I need to add three quarters of an inch on each side. So that is four inches plus one and a half inches. Okay, so I've cut, I've cut out a sheet of paper, um, four inches, uh, five and a half inches, and exactly the same for the top, but you've only got one side on this. So you've only got the bottom bits. So that's half an inch and that's quarter of an inch, so again three quarters of an inch. And I want it to be two inches deep, so therefore I add just on three quarters of an inch. So that's two and three quarters. So this piece of card here is five and a half and two and three quarters. So basically it's three quarters on three sides you need to add on to it. So when you've done that, you need to score it. Would you recommend having a little play with a piece of copy paper first? Kate? Oh yes, I yeah. wouldn't use that. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely. If it's the first time yeah. you've used these, I'll definitely use. Have uh, a little play. With have them. a little play first. Okay, so what I've done is that in shot. Yes. Okay, so on a scoreboard, I've got five and a half inches along here, and I want this to be four. So my pocket's going to be finished at four. So I'm going to score in at half an inch, and then I'm going to score again at another quarter of an inch. So I've got that. So I'm going to turn it around and do exactly the same on the bottom. So that's half an inch. And then quarter of an inch in from that. So it's three quarters of an inch here and half an inch here. Okay. And then on the third one, so one, two, and this is the third one. So that's half an inch. And three quarters of an inch gives that dimensional edge. Okay, so then you finish with your score quarters of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the pencil line in on the, so you can actually see where I've done it. So that is your score lines that I've just done. Okay, you wouldn't necessarily, you wouldn't do it in pencil again, but that's how you do it. So then you get your dies and you match these lines to your little notches. So all our dies have notches in so you can line them up. In this case, it's critical. So you'll line it up. So that's your corner bit. So you want that on the outside and you're going to line these two up. So, because you've scored them, they might just lock in. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So you just want to make sure that they're directly in line there. Are they, is that one in line? I'm not directly over it, so I can't say that well. Is that? Yeah. That looks about line. Yeah. Okay, and then tape it into place using our tiger tape, obviously. Okay. And then you're going to do exactly the same for this side. So you've got your corner on the outside. And you're going to line it up to your lines in the middle. Let's get a bit of tape. So you there. always have the L's on the yeah. top. Yeah. So you, yeah. So you, so that's it. these these yeah. are going to be cutting your bits out. So okay. 
so precise K, isn't so, it? It gives you a really crisp finish. Yeah, I'm going to say it um, every time. Okay, and then I'm going to disappear off and cut this out. We've, we've gone through the machine, so I'm just going to put those back to where they were. Was it uncomfortable going through the machine? It was. Today? It was. <laughs> 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 hasn't made us anything. No, it hasn't made us anything <laughs> whatsoever, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so it's gone through the machine. Okay, so this bit will come off like that, oh, and that bit clever. like that. So you've got exactly the same shape as you had for the one that was um, the three and a quarter by four and a quarter, isn't it? Three and a quarter by mm -hmm. four and a quarter. Okay, so you've got your little tabby bits, and then you've got your bit you're going to stick on to as well. And I'll glue this bit, so I'll show you how that goes. Okay, so I'm just going to do what I did before, and score these up. That is so yeah. precise. It used to take me ages when I did it. Um, and you've got risk of cutting bits off that you don't yeah. want to cut off as well. And you end up with um, a, a gap. I know, and it it's looks really a little, annoying. It's a bit, yeah, and it's a bit scrappy. So this, this just gives you the result every single time. So all you need to do is line it up. Once you've lined it up and taped it, you're, you're, you're ready to go. Okay, so I'll just bend those in. Okay, and obviously I have to give them a burnish. Yeah, I was just about to say that. <laughs> I can feel the eyes uh, looking at me. I think that's how I'm trying to get in. Cool. I'll get him to see if he wants to come here. And I'll just burnish these. Okay, like that. Okay, and then we're going to do exactly the same as we did before. So we're going to bend those in. So these just push in. And then that's going to glue on like that. So I'm going to glue these this time. And then give them, and hold them for a few minutes. I will turn the machine off at that point, I think. So a little drop, drop of glue here, and a drop of glue there. Don't need much. This is our book binding glue, so it does. It's nice and sticky. Okay, so you can just hold that in place. So you can see you've got a nice sharp mica corner. Oops. Okay, but what you do to have to just hold it. Okay, so I have stuck those together, and while I was sticking it together, we had a discussion, and two of our hinge spaces fit neatly into the corner so you can just squidge them down and that makes life a lot easier. Yeah, so it does. So we did have a little discussion about that and we thought that and the brains, brains were working. Anyway, so that's it. So that basically is your pocket. So I've now got a pocket, two, cent two mil um, inches lo uh, depth and uh, four inches wide and then um, with a dimension of a quarter of an inch. Now on here, again, I could have used any of our whiskers on here to give it a bit of shape. <clears throat> you can then decorate it with a piece of spare bit of card, whatever, so to match your pocket. So anyway, so that's your dimensional pockets. You could also cut, use our fancy frames, cut an aperture in the centre, put acetate behind, yes. and then you can just like slot slide, di it, slide, slide different the... pictures in so you can change your pictures. Yeah, things so like that. there's absolutely loads you yeah, can do with there those. there is. Yeah, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching.